Hello friends, uh, welcome to the course on uh, high temperature materials. The course code is MTPE22. Uh, my name is Gideon. I'm a newly joined faculty uh, at our institute. I'm affiliated with uh, the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Since this is a program elective, I believe uh, most of you are from our department. I welcome you once again for this course. I uh, seriously wish that uh, we could have met uh, under a different circumstance. I could have been with you uh, in person, uh, get acquainted with you. But unfortunately, here we are. Uh, let's uh, make uh, the best uh, use of the time uh, that is given to us. Now, uh, as of uh, teaching philosophy, uh, I don't have one uh, right now. Uh, but if you squeeze my arm to tell something about it, I would rather say uh, whatever uh, helps you understand or makes you understand the uh, concept that I'm delivering to you more clearly, uh, that would be my teaching philosophy. So enough about me. So now let's get into the uh, introductory lecture. So this, uh, in this course, uh, I'll be handling uh, most of the lectures, if not all of it. And also, I'll be uh, evaluating your understanding of this uh, lectures that are being delivered. Now, uh, similar to this lecture, uh, all, uh, all the subsequent lectures of this course will rather be flipped in the sense uh, every week, uh, three links pertaining to pre-recorded lectures will be uh, shared uh, to you. You can, of course, listen to them at your own convenience. And uh, one of the lectures uh, per week would be dedicated for, uh, uh, for discussions. The questions that might arise uh, in uh, the other lectures will be discussed uh, in this uh, time. Now, uh, at the very preface, I wanted to uh, clarify this, that um, whatever plans that I'm, I'll be delineating in this uh, lecture, uh, it's rather tentative and I'm uh, like the high temperature materials, I'm rather flexible. So if you want to change any aspects uh, that are being uh, talked about in this lecture, you can uh, very well uh, bring it up to me. Uh, I will see what can be done about it. I will uh, sincerely consider it and uh, see what can be done about it. Now, like I said, uh, the lectures will be flipped. I'll be sharing with you uh, links for the pre-recorded lectures. Uh, and uh, you can, after each and every lecture, after you listen to each and every one of them, you could uh, communicate to me the questions that you have pertaining to the lecture that you have listened to. Now, if those questions are pertinent to the subsequent lecture or the next lecture, I would be addressing it at the beginning of the next lecture. If uh, there are questions that can rather be postponed for a little while, I would uh, then collect them and I, we can talk about them uh, in the separate uh, the uh, lecture for discussion. I hope that is clear. Uh, now, the reason why I chose this mode is because, uh, like I said, uh, I would very much would have preferred to be with you in person. I would have liked to see your faces when I'm delivering these classes so that uh, I could um, rather evaluate myself if I'm communicating clearly or if not, I could re calibrate on the spot and uh, see what I'm teaching and how I am how I am teaching it and uh, maybe I could change it so that it is more uh, convincing for you but since uh, it is rather difficult for us to do that way in this online classes uh, rather it becomes uh, like a um, really uh, hectic if we try to do that uh, to, to make everyone uh, to, to uh, allow everyone to show their faces or how their responses is to each and every lectures that I'm delivering it's not that uh, pleasant to uh, do such a, a form of a lecture I thought uh, this would be more uh, a comfortable way of dealing or delivering the lecture and also it will be a more comfortable way for you to uh, like uh, try to uh, understand what is being uh, talked about. Now uh, please let me know if you have any problem with this mode of uh, communication. I believe uh, in-person discussion will not be possible throughout the semester so we are stuck with this online communication. So if in specific if you have any problem with this flipped mode of lecture please let me know. Uh, be it uh, video quality or audio quality, whatever there is, please let me know. Uh, maybe I will try to make uh, 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 changes that are necessary so that uh, the communication between us is clear. Now, having said that, let's move on to the reference books. 
So there are uh, plenty of reference books that you could uh, see. At least there are, I guess, three reference books that are mentioned in our syllabus. One can uh, look into that for uh, um, for uh, like discussions on this topic. But uh, I personally will not be following uh, a particular book uh, for uh, this particular course. Um, but uh, in addition to the books that have been already given in the syllabus, I would also recommend this other book by uh, Bar Cohen, um, wherein uh, you could find uh, a decent amount of overlap between the syllabus and what is being discussed in the book. So if you want to have a few references, uh, references in addition to the ones that are given in the syllabus, one can also have a look at uh, this book by uh, Professor Bar Cohen. Now, before proceeding further on how uh, uh, these uh, course will be split or how I, I have planned to deliver the lectures on this course, I just wanted to clarify one thing. Now, uh, the title of this course, rather the high temperature material, seems to indicate that we will be dif discussing about uh, different materials that are being used, that are uh, being used at uh, high temperature applications. Now we will be focusing on uh, different applications at the, that are that are typically involve high temperature and the materials that are being uh, in, um, being used in them. It appears that way because uh, it is it, it states it's we are really, uh, that uh, it states uh, that uh, the course will all will be about uh, high temperature materials. But uh, if you look into the syllabus uh, which is shown here, what you would find is the focus is largely on uh, the behavior aspect of the material. What uh, been delineated in the syllabus is that uh, the focus should be uh, given on high temperature behavior of uh, the materials, rather uh, talking about different materials and the way they are used in the different high temperature application and why they are being used. The focus is on uh, what are the different ways uh, the materials behave in high temperature, what makes them so unique when you compare to their regular behavior how we can understand them, what are the theories behind them and how we can quantify them. But that is what has been largely focused on the syllabus. So uh, at least to me or the way I would, uh, based on this syllabus, if I had to rename uh, this course, it would be uh, high temperature behavior of materials. But uh, I believe uh, voices above, they feel that this is not broken enough. So if it is not broken, then why fix it? So I will leave uh, the title as it is, but uh, let us just follow the syllabus which uh, largely focuses on uh, the behavior of uh, materials at high temperatures and that is what we will be doing all through the course. Now uh, for our convenience and uh, just uh, um, to give a plan on how uh, the lectures can be categorized uh, within this course, uh, we can uh, consider six modules. In addition to this particular lecture, which is rather an introductory one, uh, there will also be a few more introductory lectures where uh, we will be discussing on why one should uh, spend so much time on uh, behavior of materials, at, understanding behavior of materials at high temperature. Uh, what is the need for it and uh, what makes it so special or what is the uniqueness that pertains to high temperature behavior of materials. Uh, in this introductory lectures, I would also uh, include some historical perspective just to show that uh, we have we actually stand on a solid ground. There have been a huge amount of works that have already been done uh, in the high temperature materials or high temperature behavior of materials. And uh, there is still uh, a huge headway to make and uh, we, if interested, can also contribute to uh, the further uh, works that are being pursued in the area of high temperature behavior of materials. And that is the reason why uh, I would like to include some uh, historical perspective. And this would largely comprise, us of, comprise the introductory uh, module. Now, once we are acquainted with or convinced with why we need to understand the behavior of materials at high temperature, we then would consider a few theories that undergird the behavior of materials at high temperature. So generally, we are uh, in some ways or the other quite familiar with what to expect when you rise, uh, uh, when you rise um, 
the temperature of a material to certain degree or uh, to certain level and uh, we uh, since we have an uh, overview or some idea about how a material would behave at such high temperature uh, in the uh, second module we will focus on uh, the theories that undergird it so this model uh, even uh, in this uh, module even though there are uh, numerous theories that can be looked into but uh, the time owing to the uh, uh, time constraint and uh, the vastness of topic that needs to be uh, covered in this particular course, we will be uh, doing a rather a survey of the different theories that are available to us. We will be looking into different theories uh, and we will be seeing the aspects of the theory that makes uh, the behavior of my, uh, high temperature, uh, the behavior of materials at high temperature more pertinent to us. So these theories will help us to understand the factors that are dominant uh, when uh, the, the temperature of the material is raised or the ambience uh, of the material is, uh, is changed to an high temperature. Now, uh, after uh, once we are uh, rather uh, comfortable with uh, certain theoretical aspects on what are the factors that will be uh, uh, that will play a, a dominant role when we raise the temperature of a material, then we could uh, uh, specifically consider different behavior of the materials. To begin with, we will consider uh, the response of a material to uh, mechanical conditions at high temperatures. And uh, in this module, we will largely uh, focus on uh, creep again uh, in keeping with uh, the syllabus that has been given to us. And uh, in addition to the theoretical aspect of creep, I believe uh, some of you would already have uh, like an in uh, I would already have had an introductory course on uh, creep. Uh, here we will try to uh, build on it. We will try to build on the theoretical aspect of it, and we will also see what are the different forms of creep, if if any, uh, that are, are available to us. Now. Um, we will also see, uh, try to understand uh, the practical relevances of uh, um, doing an exhaustive study of creep. Now, uh, after uh, understanding or trying to understand uh, the um, behavior of material under a mechanical uh, condition, under a definite mechanical condition, we will see how also uh, the material fail at high temperature. Uh, are there any differences to uh, the failure of material when you compare it to uh, the similar behavior at room temperature? If so, if there are any differences, what contribute to, the, uh, to those differences will be the focus of the fourth module wherein we will be focusing on uh, the fracture of the materials at high temperature. So uh, in the third module, we will be uh, understanding uh, or I will be understanding the uh, response of a material to a uh, definite mechanical condition and in the fourth module we will be seeing the ultimate failure of it and uh, the factors that contribute to these failures and the mechanisms governing them which are characteristically associated with high temperature. And uh, once we are uh, pretty convinced with uh, the, rather the mechanical response of the material at high temperature we will also include in this course the uh, the surface behavior or how the surface of a material um, responds to um, an increase in the temperature. We will see how resistant it is to a given environment and um, again in keeping with the uh, uh, syllabus we will emphasize more on ox oxidation uh, particularly since uh, it is something that has been commonly observed and uh, it is something that uh, the industries also want to address in a, in a large scale so we will be focusing on how to how, uh, how best to understand uh, the uh, oxidation or the corrosion of materials at high temperature and finally, in the sixth module, we will be talking about uh, strengthening mechanism. After all, we don't want to be like uh, the, those doctors who brilliantly understand what causes a particular disease, but at the end don't know how to cure it. We don't want to be uh, like them. So instead, uh, in the sixth module, we would try to address whatever understanding we have gained so far. Based on that, we will try to uh, rather heal or create a material that could withstand uh, the high temperature both in a mechanical perspective or in the mechanical standpoint and from uh, uh, the corrosion standpoint so that both the surface is protected and also the structure of the uh, material is protected. Again, now let me reiterate uh, this module or uh, the framework of this uh, course is again tentative. 
if you think there is a there is uh, a better way uh, wherein we could uh, categorize the different lectures please let me know i will i will, I will give it a serious look and see if uh, it would be more productive to follow such a framework if not uh, let's see how uh, best we can suit with this modules now let me come to the uh, rather uh, uh, one aspect of this lecture that you should be least worried about that is uh, the assessment or uh, how i will be evaluating your understanding of this course so i plan to have uh, three assignments um, and depending on uh, the content of this assignment the allocation of the mark might vary and in addition to these three assignments there will be a presentation or discussion so this would probably be in groups uh, a topic would be uh, given to you and uh, you would be requested to present uh, your thoughts on the topic you could either do it in front of the class as a presentation or we could you could talk to me we could have a discussion just to show how much you have understood this topic uh, given uh, the lectures you have been attending so in that context how you are uh, you have understood the given topic so that would be the second part and uh, the and uh, of course finally uh, there will be a end semester uh, i guess uh, in the uh, present academic framework uh, this end semester is rather indispensable i guess uh, you can't be without it so i have included it in the assessment so these so based on these i will be evaluating your under, uh, understanding of this course so I, again uh, this should not uh, bother you much so in this introductory lecture these are the things that i wanted to get across i hope i have done that in a convincing manner so please let me know if uh, i have to make any changes if i have to improve any improve upon anything uh, please feel free to do that my the way to communicate uh, to me uh, be it uh, email id or my phone number will be available to you once uh, we have uh, established a team in the ms team or uh, a group in the whatsapp uh, maybe at there I will share my email ID and also my phone number. You could just communicate to me uh, whatever suggestions or the questions that you have. I would uh, uh, I would uh, give a serious consideration to it and maybe if if there is something that um, I'm planning to adapt, I will let you know. Or uh, if there is something which I feel uh, can be uh, rather modified, I would also uh, try to convince you that why the reason why I have not taken it seriously. So that's it for me uh, in this lecture. So let's see ourselves in the upcoming classes. So good luck and uh, stay safe. Bye.